Hello, my name is Ana Perez and I will explain how to make cluster analysis, concretely the application to molecular variability studies. The objective is to give the basis for cluster analysis, so the student will be able to explain the theoretical basis of this type of analysis, also to develop a cluster analysis from molecular marker data and to interpret the results. First of all, we will justify the usefulness of cluster analysis and we will make, uh, develop a method to develop this type of analysis and we will interpret the results we get. When you make a genetic study in which you want to analyze diversity, uh, one of the main objectives is to establish similarity among different samples. But usually you have a lot of information so you need a representation system which allows you to make a more visual uh, result. So one of the most frequently uh, methods used is cluster analysis. Which are the steps to complete cluster analysis? First of all, we need a matrix of the original data. Then we, uh, the original matrix can be, in our case, uh, data from molecular markers. So you have to analyze the presence or absence of a concrete band. In this example, we have four samples and four bands and if we want to transform these results from the gel into a matrix, we need, to, we need to code each of the bands which are present as a 1 and the absence of a band is coded as 0. This way you get your matrix from the gel, the results of the gel. Once you have the original uh, matrix of the data, you have to transform this data into a similarity or distance matrix. How do you develop this transformation? You have to establish first the comparison um, uh, between samples by pairs. So you have to analyze how many bands you have in sample 1 and also in sample 2, and this will be called A. How many bands are not in sample 1 but are present in sample 2? How many bands are present in sample 1 and not in sample 2? And this will be called C. And how many bands are not present in sample 1 and not in sample 2? How do you establish this comparison? Imagine we want to compare in our, in our example samples 1 and 2. We have three bands which are present in both samples, so A will be 3. And we have one band which, which is present in sample 1 but not in sample 2, so C will be 1. We have no bands which are present in sample 1 and not, uh, sorry, not present in sample 1 but present in sample 2 and no bands which are not present in uh, sample 1 and 2. We will establish this comparison for each of the pairs we can establish from our samples and once we have established this comparison we need to, we need to use a formula to establish the similarity uh, between each pair of samples. Most of the formula you can use when you work with dominant uh, molecular markers are formulas which include the similarities, so bands which are present in both or bands which are not present in any of the samples all the formulas you have here has this uh, uh, as the count of coincidence of the bands and you have to take into account all the bands you contabilize. For example, in the formula we are going to use, which is called DICE formula, we have twice the bands which are present in both samples and we do not consider uh, bands which are not present in sample 1 and sample 2. How can we establish this uh, formula, how can we use this formula in our samples? In the case of samples, similarity between samples 1 and 2 will be twice the samples which are common and we will have to divide by twice the samples which are common and samples which are, are present in one sample and not the other. We will establish this similarity among each pair of sample and we will get a matrix which uh, has just the comparison between pairs of samples. A similarity between each sample and itself is one because one sample is exactly the same as itself. Then we have to apply, once we have this similarity matrix, we have to apply the clustering method and we will start, the one we are going to use in this example is the method UPGMA, so unweighted pair group method with arithmetic averages. So first we select those samples which are more similar. In our case, the highest value of similarity is between samples 1 and 2. So we make a group, a cluster, with these two samples. They disappear as individual samples. And we have to recalculate the similarity 
with the rest of the samples. For example, similarity between group 1, 2 and sample 3 is the average of the similarity between sample 1 and 3 and sample 2 and 3. So this average will give us the similarity between group 1, 2 and sample 3. We apply the same expression to similarity between group 1, 2 and sample 4 and for those samples which are not included in any group the, si the similarity is the same. So for samples 3 and 4 which are not included in the group we have just formed, similarity is the original value. This is our new similarity matrix. We have to transform to continue with the process and we start selecting again the two samples which are more similar. So in this case it's group 1, 2 and sample 3. We make a group with them, so now we have group 1, 2, 3 and we have to again recalculate the similarity with the rest of the samples. To recalculate this similarity we go back to the original similarity matrix. So the similarity between group 1, 2, 3 and sample 4 is the average between 1 similarity 1, 4, 2, 4 and 3, 4. Now we have all our samples group, 1 and 2 with a similarity value of 0.86, samples uh, group 1, 2 with sample 3 and samples 1, 2, 3 with uh, sample 4. So now we have to represent these values. First we make the group between samples 1 and 2 with the concrete similarity value, then we add sample 3 and then sample 4. This is the result of our representation from our original data, so can, how can we interpret these results? The important points are notes of the representation which give us the information about the similarity and we have to remember that our original data were four samples and four bands for each of the sample, so it's more visible the, repre the representation we get just to establish the similarity. We know that samples 1 and 2 are the more similar, then sample 3 join this group and then sample 4. It's important to notice that we uh, lost part of the information, for example, now we have samples 1, 2 and 3 uh, grouped together with a similarity value of 0.73 but we knew that similarity between samples 1 and 3 was another value and all the same for samples 2 and 3. So we lost information but we get, in, uh, uh, we get a visual way to analyze the results. That's especially important if our, dat if our data matrix is bigger than the one we have used because we get results easier. This is just one example using uh, dominant molecular markers. There are different methods to calculate the similarity uh, between samples and also different methods to develop the cluster. So uh, students which are interest, who are interested in, in getting more information can use this reference you have here, cluster analysis for research.